Hi, welcome back to Trollholm. I promised you a more detailed review of the Cube Moby One as a Reaper controller, so that's what we are going to look at now. Um, we'll jump straight in. So, firstly, this is designed as a Cube based controller, but it out transmits, sends out standard mini MIDI controls, so we can use them to control all manner of other things, including Reaper as a door. So, what I have set up as a as an example, is a track that duplicates, to a large extent, how the Cubase channel, st channel strip is set up. So I've renamed these, but these are standard Reaper um, uh, plugins that you find in the in the free set. So, and I've set one up to correspond to the pre, one to the gate, one to the compressor, one to the EQ, and then one for saturation. We've then got a number of other controls around here for uh, transport and um, channel. So let me just drag these out of the way. So if you are setting this up as a standard vanilla implementation without using anything else that doesn't come out of the box with Reaper, it's pretty straightforward. Time takes a lot of time, but it is pretty straightforward. For things like channel controls, you go to your actions list, and you select an action, say if you want to configure the play button, um, you'd go for play, and then scroll down to the relevant ones, in this case, transport, play. You can see I've already done some configuration here, but you would add a new item and then hit the button you want. And okay, that, and that is now set up. And now if I hit play, you can see that little green light Firing up, jobs are good. Un. For plug-in control, that's slightly different. You need to go to the trim section and then find a uh, part of the control you want. So you can see the, the plugins I've got in here, the pre, the gate, the compressor, the EQ, and the saturation, um, and go to learn and then twiddle the relevant knob. And again, okay. And then we can see that that then works. And that's what I've done for a standard set of controls on here. So we can see that with things like the gate, we've got our, our threshold in there. Um, we've got our range. I've translated to hysteresis because there isn't always a direct correlation between what the Cubase controls are and what the um, standard uh, Reaper ones are, but we've gone through and we've got everything, so release, maps across, attack, maps across, um, and you can see it all controls. Um, if we go and have a look at something like the compressor, um, again, threshold and things like this, and, and you'll see here that it's doing quite a lot of scrolling to get all the way down to the bottom and all the way back up to the top, and that's with this multiplier on. So this is what allows you to do some really fine tuning, which is lovely, but without that, as you can see, it's, I'm doing a lot of scrolling. Um, I can speed it up by adding that multiplier on, but there's still kind of quite a lot going on there. Um, so that's one of the things that could be better. The other thing is having played around with it, um, if I wanted to get that threshold back to exactly zero, you know, I'm jumping up and down a lot to get it exactly there. Um, and on Cubase, if this is configured for Cubase, you just hit that knob and it would re-zero it. Um, so that's something that could be better. Um, over here on the, the transport controls, um, we've got these configured. So um, I've got that learn set to record. I've got the effects toggle bypass, you can see here. Um, read automation, write automation. Um, and then what have we got? Things like pan and volume. And again, with the pan, you can see actually that's not quite getting back to zero when I'm doing that. So I need to go to there to get that back to zero. And then of course, if I forget to under it, it's then a lot of up and down to get that back to normal. So there's some stuff that could be better. And this all works out of the box. You set the learning thing, plug it in and off you go. You know, it's it, does mean you can just 
you know, you've got all the controls you'd expect to see here. Um, so for, you know, as many kind of bands as you need, or is supported by the controller rather. Um, you know, play around with it as much as you want. Um, for the saturation um, controller, I've just used the JS saturation there, and the only knob that is in use here, because it's a simple control, is this drive knob. The other three knobs of the saturation control not in use at the moment. Um, and you can just kind of bypass these effects um, as you need them uh, using, funnily enough, the bypass buttons. There are some other knobs that aren't being used. So these four here in Cubase would select the different kind of filter. Um, in Reaper, if we look at the EQ option, the only parameters we can um, show are the ones here. And as you can see, the kind of filter is not one of the parameters there. But this and other problems can be easily addressed by the use of a third party plugin called Rea Learn. Now, this is a piece of donationware. Um, have a look on the, the Rea, the Cocos Reaper forum um, for a thread by a chap called Helgo Boss, um, and you'll find all about it. He's the guy who generated it. Some donation where if you're spending money on a box like this, I would absolutely recommend um, crossing his palm with silver and getting yourself real alone because that opens up a whole load of other options. What options you say? Okay, well, let's have a, a look at some of those options. So I have up here in the monitor effects a copy of real learn that I've started to populate. Um, you'll see that's bypassed. Doesn't matter. As long as it's instantiated there, it will still run. So you can still have all your normal monitoring um, software on there if you use something like Sonarworks or, or some kind of room color correction. You can have all on, on, all of that on there and bring that in and out as you need it. Um, as long as this has got the tick box against it, then it will run even if the FX is, is cancelled. I keep it on the monitoring. You could keep it on your master bus. You could keep it on any one of your standard audio channels. And what we can see here is that we've got some of these controls that I'd previously mapped across on the using the learn function are now duplicated here in real learn. <clears throat> and this will overwrite any previously mapped ones. But what we've got here is if we have a look at this one, set pan and um, set volume, what I've got these now set to do is reset to zero. So if I wiggle that pan knob down here, we can see that moving around, and if I just press it, that resets to zero. Similarly, if I play around with the volume, that resets to zero. And the way we do this is you can go in there and then you can go and do some quite advanced mapping. Now, this works off just the, the note that's transmitted from pressing those buttons. Um, it's set to the track set pan, and it's set to whichever the selected pan is. Um, and then when we see the, the output, you'll see it's set to, to send that to the center as a minimum and a maximum, and hence it will always go to zero. So similarly, if we bring this over here, I've set a couple of things on the, the pre. So if I go to the, the low pass filter, I can bring that across, I can change the slope, and then I can just reset that slope to the default and I can reset that frequency to the default just by tapping those buttons. That's obviously very useful when you start playing around with stuff and realizing how much you've balled something up and you just want to go back to zero. Um, to show you how you do that, let's go and have a look at the gate and we will add in the gate threshold to set that back to zero if you press this button, which at the moment does nothing. So let's add a new um, control and we will learn the source, which is the and we will learn the target, which is this. And we're just going to wiggle that around a moment because it doesn't matter. Um, and then we're going to go and play around with that. So you could rename that. I recommend you do um, something smart. Uh, so let's call it go okay, threshold. Can I spell threshold to zero? Um, that bit's all set from the learning bit. This is part of set because what this has got FX parameter set value, that's good. 
but it's currently running off the assumption of a track number and the assumption of a position of the FX. We can be smarter about that. So we can say selected track, and rather than going on position, we can go with named, and then you have to write exactly what is included in the, the name description there. So if you've got like VST, colon, waves, colon, whatever, you have to write that out exactly. But then it recognizes that as a, um, a plugin, and then we can play around. So threshold is still what we're going to be playing with. And then we've got our output. We want that to set to zero, zoom in, and oops, it does this weird thing. If you ever correct, I hate mouses. This is why I've got a goddamn controller. There we go, zero, zero. That's all set. Okay, so now if I hit that threshold button, it jumps straight back to zero. So now I have the control up and down as I want and back to zero. But let's look at that. I've already got the accelerator on here and it's still a lot of up and downing. So let's try and speed that up a bit as well. So let's add one and we're going to learn the source. Is that threshold control there? And learn the target. It's there. So we'll edit that and we'll call that gate threshold mount. Call it whatever you want. Again, so we're selected, named, and we've got cube gate threshold. And here we've got our kind of um, sort of uh, step size. And if we set that up to say a minimum of like 10. That now jumps around a lot more. If I take that off, I've still got my fine tuning that I can move around nice and tight, or I can jump big styly. So you can control how much that moves around. And having done that, we can then of course go on to the compressor, do exactly the same thing, set those back to, so that uh, a click on the, the button sets those defaults, similarly with the EQ, frequency gain, bandwidth, etc. What we can't do, unfortunately, is select your options here, or you can't select the enable bit, which is a bit of a shame because really that's what these four buttons would have been lovely to do. But as it stands, I can't get Rear Learn to do that. It doesn't recognize these as configurable, MIDI configurable items. So it may be that somebody out there can come up with a, a solution for that. I haven't got one. So there we go. That's pretty much it. That is the, the standard vanilla configuration. Um, and as it stands, you've got uh, a number of buttons that are available for further configuration if you wanted to just add this in. Um, and you've also, of course, got another two modes on the device. So if you have any hardware or software that you regularly use and want to open up this wealth of knobs and buttons for, then all of that is available to, to learn. Um, and again, uh, depending on what your programming will depend on how much functionality is, is available. Of course, once you've got it configured, you can then unplug it, plug it in, move it around, swap it to a different machine, bring it back here, plug it back in. And as long as your tracks have the right names on the plugins, it will still behave itself. Um, all of that is controlled by the real learn or by the, um, the programming you've put in on the, the actions programming. As part of the programming work I've been doing here, I have been saving this for uh, as default so that we can just have these available. If you uh, buy one of these, you can just go and uh, grab a default track chain, which is set up um, the default effects, the um, standard kind of default template set up and all that kind of thing. So you just drag them across into the relevant folder in the Reaper directory and it will all work. Now, one of the other disadvantages of, of not going down the rear learn option, just using the kind of vanilla install, is that's all, all that detail is stored in that kind of Reaper KB file. And if you overwrite your existing one, then any custom keyboard commands that you have saved will also be overwritten. So whether that's of value or importance to you is obviously down to you to decide. Um, but if you go down the rear learn option, um, then 
that's not a problem because uh, you're building a new set of controls. Now, Reaper doesn't only have its own plugins, it uses a whole variety of things. So if we come over to my, my normal working machine rather than the vanilla install behind us, um, we have uh, my usual channel strip over here. So my standard channel strip comprises uh, the X console and uh, Acoustica plugin from Aqua. So, but again, you can configure all of these to run on your standard cube. So as a quick example here, I've got my input gain selected, um, my high cut filter um, on and off with the, uh, the push button action. And then I can do the multiplication by three in there. Uh, slope doesn't control slope on this because there is no slope. So what I've actually got this doing, if you look down here, is I have my mix control going on there for my parallel compressor because that was a control I wanted available. Similarly with the um, low cut, that's there again with the times three in there. And the slope here controls the speed of my second release. Um, and again, I can hit the, the button and reset that to the default. And all of that is controlled um, through Rear Learn. So I've got my various BX controls um, all set up in here and this time appropriately named. Um, other things, um, so EQ all kind of works pretty much as you'd expect. So um, low gain, low threshold, uh, slightly different here. Q isn't variable on this, it's just a high or low Q. So again, push button um, and the enable and disable, again, doesn't function at a per band basis, but that enables me to do things like switch between the shelf. Obviously I can switch in the whole EQ section in and out like that. Um, that's all pretty straightforward. Um, gate uh, threshold does threshold, uh, range does range, um, and to match the configuration on screen, um, the push button does the, the fast and slow. Um, we don't have an attack button, so I've got hysteresis on the attack. Um, and then release um, does what you'd expect with uh, the button there, resetting it to standard. Um, and that's all as you'd expect. Likewise, compressor, threshold, ratio. Um, again, the, the buttons are configured to, to match what you see on screen. Um, some of them are configured to reset to zero, likewise um, gain and stuff like that, and it all switches in and out as you'd expect. A few other controls, the key and the invert are unavailable buttons. Uh, moving on to the EQ. No, I think we've covered the EQ, haven't we? We've got all of that. So let's just uh, have a look at what happens on the coffee pun, because I had these four knobs available and these knobs available, which weren't used on the standard one. So um, I can switch that in and out there. Um, we've got our controls in there. Um, this, as you can see, jumps quite nicely between the segments without having to do too many switches. Likewise, this one, a couple of nice clicks, easily one side to the other. Um, now, all of that is configured with Rear Learn. So if we go and scroll down, and I've uh, made a, a fundamental error here, um, because what I failed to do is properly name these controls. But if we have a look at something like our low boost frequency, we can see, interesting, let's try that again. Let's just have a look. Um, we've got um, here, uh, that's just our, if we have a look at our speed here, I've got that set to, to plus 100. Um, the reason being is because the Acoustica works on a range of 0 to 1000. Now, I don't want to be scrolling for an entire thousand um, times to move a knob a mere matter of a few steps. So by cranking those steps up to 100 each time, I can then quickly go from one end to the other. And I've done the same with things like the high frequency gain and stuff like that, that's on a plus 10, so I can still get quite nice granular stuff, whereas the high frequency knob, again, set to 100, um, 
so it jumps easily between the relevant settings where you've got a switch and that's one of the advantages of using the kind of the the real learn function um, outside of the plugin space um, I've also got a few little things customized myself so rather than having the volume on uh, the second knob here because actually I've got a set of sliders on a, a different control panel um, I can actually just set my stereo width which is something I use a bit more often and again all the usual stuff with it defaulting to zero is built in and th that's really it. it does take a while to set up there's no messing around um, we will have some uh, default files for the, the standard Reaper install but if you're using your own um, plugins you will need to you know give yourself a few hours to, to set it up to run how you want but once it's there it's all good it remembers itself um, as I say you know this is a piece of donation where from uh, called Real Learn. Um, if you're going to invest in one of these invest in that as well uh, it really does transform how, how useful it is um, but even as a default box it still gives you 90% of that core functionality there on your knobs you can close your eyes you can listen to stuff you know that record is always here it's always here every time if you're reaching over when you're recording over there you don't have to be hunting around with the mouse to get it over the record button and all of that all the advantages of hardware control are really really there at your fingertips